بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين والصحابة الأكرمين وتابعونهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعلينا معهم فيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have reached the 103rd aphorism the 103rd hikma from this blessed collection of hikam of Imam Ibn Al-Tayl al-Sikandari radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa nafa'ana bi ilumi fi darin ameen and as we continue to study this text these are foundational meanings of the spiritual path that he is presenting to us and what a blessing to have an advisor someone who is a nasih that can help us help show us the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a blessing. You don't know the greatness of this blessing until that it's taken from you. <laughs> to actually have that a path to Allah to Baraka wa Ta'ana. Hujjat al Islam Imam Ghazali, when he speaks about the six foundational meanings of the Quran, that the first two that he mentions, which is when he will then mention specific verses from them, is that ta'arif al madru that making known the one that we're being called to, Allah. And he said the second most important meaning after that is the ta'rif al-sirat al-mustaqim alati tajibu mulazimatuhu lis-suluk fi-suluk ilayhi. So he, it's making known the path, the straight path, that it's required, it's an obligation for someone to travel if they want to, that draw near to him. And so to have the spiritual path laid out for us is an immense blessing from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this aphorism number 103, is it Imam Ibn Al-Ta'ila says, anhu, This could translate, the knower of Allah, and really what we would say here is, the utter need of the knower of Allah never ceases. Nor does he find rest in anything other than Allah. So you could summarize this by saying that this is about how the knower of Allah always remains in a state of need of Allah. So the two most important words here that we need to understand this aphorism is the word idtirar and qarar. They rhyme in Arabic. But idtirar is utter need, absolute need. The need where you realize that absolutely you have nowhere other, nowhere else to turn except to Allah Ta'ala. That no one can help you except Allah. There is that no escaping Allah. That anyone or anything else that you fear, you run from it. But Allah, you run to Him. In no anthropomorphic way, subhanahu wa ta'ana. So, Al-Arif. The Arif is the Gnostic, the knower of Allah. La yuzulu idtiraruhu. Zala yuzulu is to cease, to vanish, to disappear. So what is not ceasing here? What is that not vanishing here? What is not disappearing here? His idtirar. So his feeling and his, the reality of him being an absolute need. And really what he's saying here is, is that the Arif is aware of that this is a reality, whether or not you and I realize it, as we will see it shortly. This is our reality as human beings. But the enlightened person is the one who aligns themselves with reality. So the knowers of Allah are more in tune with reality, the true nature of things, than anyone else in Allah Ta'ala's creation. In fact, you could say the vast majority of people are living in Oham. They're living in this world of illusion and delusion. They're living in this world of fanciful imaginations, of wishful thinking, of some utopian reality. And they are oftentimes trying to change their state of mind so they can have mind-altering experiences of different sorts all of which are haram in the sacred law, to escape the reality as they know it. And then all of these other that things of our time, 
where that all of a sudden that you can that put on that goggles and you're in a whole different that realm. You're seeing totally different things and you're in the state of virtual reality and on and on and on. People will do all different types of things to try to escape reality, but we will all die. Kurun nafsin al mot. No matter how many pills that you take to prolong your life, no matter how much you watch your health, no matter what it is that you try to do, they're not going to find that death is some gene that they can remove and that we're going to attain immortality. It's not going to happen. Allah has decreed that we're all going to die. Even if they freeze your body after it is that you die and so forth, this is wishful thinking. Allah has decreed that everyone's going to die. So it's better for us to come to terms with reality now to prepare for the hereafter. And the more that we come to terms with reality now, the easier it will be when we transition from this world into the hereafter. And so in the best case scenario is that our spirit is taken from us the way that a single hair is pulled out of dough. So if you have some hair stuck in dough and you just, it comes right out, no problem. And that's the easiest. But then on the other side, it gets really severe in terms of the difficulty, the all latif of the spirit being pulled out. So al arif la yuzulu idtiraruhu wa la yukunu ma'aghirillahi qararuhu. So this word qarar is a word in the Arabic language, has a range of meanings. And its most outward meaning, it's settledness, qarar. Physically being in a place where you reside, you're settled somewhere. And then it takes on this meaning and connotes steadiness and stability. So Allah Ta'ala says, that in relation to the shajara khabitha, it's been uprooted from the ground, it has no stability. So that if your roots aren't planted, there's no stability. This is the kalima khabitha. Is that people who that think that somehow they're going to attain something by disbelieving in Allah or relying on none other than Allah. They realize that this whole world is like a spider's web. And it's the ohan al but So Allah says, Mala maqara has no stability. So this is, has the meaning of steadiness and stability. And then it takes on the meaning of reposed rest in stillness. <coughs> so the Arif is someone does not find rest in anything other than Allah. And this is a deep meaning. And you can start to see when we go through difficulties in our life how much we are in need of this science. This book should be studied in modern psychology where people to realize that actually the better long-term solution, if someone needs medication, that's a different story. But aside of like the need for medication, this is much more effective long-term to have these meanings internalized in you than any medication would ever possibly do for you. That it should be studied. Think about if you have that meaning. What does it mean to be settled in your life? So normally, when things are going okay for us, we have our home, everything is fine at home, that we have relationships, we have work, we have people that are part of our lives, and there's a bit of repose, there's a bit of stillness, everything's fine. But then all, imagine if all of a sudden something goes wrong at home, and you have something go wrong in a relationship, and something going wrong at work, is that now you have a state that's the opposite of repose, rest, and stillness. You're agitated. And so what he's going to say here is, is that normal people like us, is that we oftentimes don't realize our absolute need of Allah until we're sent tribulations that agitate us. Whereas the people of Allah, whether things are easy, whether things are hard, whether things are turbulent, or whether things are still, they're always with Allah. Think about the greatness of that meaning. If you and I, despite 
turbulent times of our life is that we could find stability and be grounded. Wow. That's an amazing state to be in. That's how we want to be. That's why we read these books. We want to be like these Arifin Bila. And we're not. We're distant from that. We're like common folk. We're like children. <laughs> if we get what we want, we're happy. If we don't get what we want, we cry. And many of us, were adults, but we throw tantrums all the time. That's the reality of our state. Anyway. So, the previous aphorism, number 102, <coughs> was about having a meaning come to your heart, i.e. that you're inspired with that meaning by Allah Ta'ala, and to ask, when Allah literally loosens your tongue, is it to know that He wants to give you. And so how does that relate to this one, the city Ahmed ibn Ajiba that he says about this? Is that once the door of ma'rifah, the knowledge of Allah, opens up for you, he said, then the way that you approach asking is very different. Because you find your sufficiency in the one who causes everything to happen in his creation. So then the motivation behind your supplication starts to change. It becomes idharan lil faqa. You're showing your need to Allah. You're showing that your absolute need of Him. And the state of impoverishment in need is always with you. It never ceases. And this is what he's indicating in this aphorism, why he follows it up after the one that preceded. Because that we might think that, okay, if I'm being inspired with all of these supplications, is that I'm just going to keep asking and keep getting. But there's an adab, there's an etiquette that goes along with this. Is that where then we start to ask, yani the motivation behind us asking is more one of showing that we're in need and asking because he wants us to ask him. It's a subtle but huge difference. And at the basic level, there's nothing wrong whatsoever in asking Allah Ta'ala for something you need. There's nothing wrong with that. So this doesn't mean that, okay, I'm not going to ask Allah for anything. No, that's a state. It's a state. And there is a hadith that says, that man shagaluhu dhikri an masadati, a'taytu aftal ma'ati as Anyone who has my remembrance preoccupy him from asking me for something, I will give him the greatest of what I give those who are asking. So this is a state that overcomes one. And it's a blessed state. And this is what Imam Haddad is referring to in his famous qasida, Qad kafani al murabi Min su'ali wa ikhtiyari, fadduai wa abdihari, shahidunni biftiqari. Is that the knowledge of my Lord is sufficient. It suffices me from my su'al and that anything that I would, my, what I'm asking for and anything that I can choose from myself. So my supplication and my turning to him is a testimony to my absolute need. For this reason, I supplicate him. In times of ease and in times of difficulty. See the relationship to the meaning here? Because the vast majority of people will usually only ask Allah in times of difficulty. Please make dua for me. We should ask people to make dua for us, even if we're not in a difficult state. And of course, it's fine to ask someone to make dua for them when you're in a bad state or you're going through a difficult time. But we should make dua in times of ease and in hardship. But there's just something about us stubborn human beings is that we find rest in the things of this world where we're comfortable that everything's going okay and we just feel like everything is fine and we don't need anything. But that's a huge veil. The state that we want to be in is that where we don't need a tribulation to be in the right state. And when those type of people do receive tribulations, it's very different from its taraqi. It's not a punishment, nor is it an atonement. It's for them to spiritually ascend. And ultimately, the people of Allah Ta'ala are the ones who are tried the most. 
So the utter need of the knower of Allah never ceases, nor does he find rest in anything other than Allah. So the one who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of his own reality, which includes his own ego, his lower self, which includes his attributes. And the greater our insights are into who we truly are and the various attributes that we have, the more that knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will have. And so, man arafa nafsu, akar arafa rabba. Whoever knows his own self will know Allah. And so, that the way that we do this is, is that we realize is that we are in absolute need, and Allah has no need. Is that we are humble, and Allah is great. Is that we are powerless, and Allah is all powerful. Is that we are that lowly, and Allah is noble. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we're aware of the reality of our state. But if there's a veil on the heart, is that we'll think that we're the ones who are acting, we're the ones who are doing. And outwardly, Allah Ta'ala has given us a freedom of choice to do certain things, for sure. But the Arifin Billah, they see things differently. They don't see it as them. They know that they've been given uh, freedom of choice and they acquire their acts but they try to do everything that relies solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that as for people who that are not arifin billah, people who do not know Allah from the common folk like our own selves, is that usually is that the state of ittirar, of absolute need, utter need, arises from various tribulations, whether that be some type of sickness, <coughs> whether that be poverty, or whatever else it might be. And that the same author, Ibn Atayla, has in his famous book, Lataif al Minan, he says a quote, Man anwaruhu, lam The one who has a more comprehensive and expansive light in his heart. I mean, the lights are shining in there that taking over the heart. Is that the more light of faith in the heart, the more they realize how much they're in need of Allah. SubhanAllah. And then he goes on to say, is that Allah Taala rebuked people in the Quran who only turn to him when things go wrong, such that they realize that they're in need of him. And so he quotes a few verses. So Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessings you have are from Allah. Imagine if we just put the part of that one verse into practice. That you and I were aware that every blessing that we have is from Allah. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ يَمْتَنْ From in Allah. It's very easy to understand with our intellects. But what we want is that to be our reality where we are ever aware that every blessing that we have is from Allah. So we are in completely immersing ourselves in shukr, in gratitude and thankfulness. <laughs> then whenever hardship touches you, to him alone you cry for help. So when do you turn to him, cry for help? When hardship comes to you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرُّ دَعَانَ لِجَمْبِهُ قَائِدًا وَقَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرُّهُ مَرَّ كَلَّمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى ضُرٍ مَسَّهُ كَذَلِكُ زُيِّنَ لِلْمُسْرِفِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whenever someone is touched by hardship, they cry out to us. Whether lying on their side sitting or standing, but when we relieve their hardship, but when we relieve their hardship, they return to their old ways as if they had never cried to us to remove any hardship. This is how the misdeeds of the transgressors have been made appealing to them. So just think you and I, is that all of a sudden that we get sick. 
Oh, do you have any dhikr that I can say? Do you have any salawat that I can say? And during that period, we're doing a lot of dhikr. We're doing a lot of salawat. We're very concerned about a lot, our state and this type of... But then, all of a sudden, we start to get a little bit better. And we fall back into our heedlessness. As if that we never were in need before that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَنْ يُنَجِّيكُمْ مِنْ ظُلَمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ تَدْعُونَهُ تَرَرَّئٍ وَخُفْيَةً لَنْ أَنْجَانَ مِنْ هَذِي نَلُكُنَنَّ مِنْ الشَّاكِرِينَ Say, O Prophet, who rescues you from the darkest times on land and at sea? He alone you call upon with humility openly and secret. If you rescue us from this, we will be ever grateful. And that's the state that they're in. While they're going through that here, the lulamat here is translated as darkest times, like difficulties, tribulations. So what the scholars of this science say is that the awam, the common Muslim, because is that they're unaware of the reality of the situation. They're unaware in their normal state, experientially, of how much they're in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah sends these tribulations to them so that they'll be in a state of itirar, be aware of their utter need, so that then they can realize his rububiyya, his lordship, and his greatness. What a meaning. So the next time we go through a tribute, may Allah ta'ala protect us and preserve us from all tribulations, and if we're afflicted with them, may Allah assist us. We need to turn to Allah, not run away from Him. And we need to see everything coming from Him. And to learn to find the opportunities for closest to Allah Taala in the very same tribulations that we are experiencing. Because there are means for us to come to know our utter and absolute need. And to rectify our relationship with Him and to be aware of reality, even if it's for a short period of time. And so this is one of the most powerful internal etiquettes if we get sick, for instance. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with good health. You realize your weakness, Ya Rab. I'm weak, Ya Rab. I can't do anything without you. I was going through my day thinking almost that I'm just in of myself doing this. Anyway, if a believer was asked, of course, that we know everything is from Allah. But then all of a sudden you get sick. And that same day that you're able to do on a normal, you can't do anymore. And you struggle. You can only do a half day. You have to rest because you're sick. These are moments for us to be aware <coughs> of reality. So Sheikh Abu Abbas and Mursi, radiallahu anhu, he said, Al-arifu la yazalu muttarran. This is the state of the knower of Allah. He always is in a state of feeling of an absolute need. And what a blessed state to be in. And think about how much, how many delusions he'll be protected from. Where he's broken before Allah, realizes his, his absolute need. You're, where that person is spared from so many different things, so much hardship that would come their way were that state not to be there. So Sidi Ahmed ibn Ajiba adds a little bit uh, slightly more deeply spiritual meaning here. And he says, to the degree that we understand the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rububiyyah, his lordship, is to the degree that we will recognize our own ubudiyah, our own servitude. And the more that we realize our servitude, the more that we'll realize how we're absolutely in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single moment. And understanding this is one of the asrar of taraqi, one of the secrets of spiritual ascension. If we can understand this meaning. Understanding this is one of the secrets to constantly spiritually ascend. And when our teachers have said on different occasions, traits that we need to attain high degrees of, close, degrees of closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to benefit in a short amount of time from blessed places and from blessed people. One of the five traits that they mentioned is 
الاستمساك بالتواضع والانكسار is it clinging to constantly being in a state of humility and brokenness before Allah Ta'ala and these meanings of humility brokenness and absolute need they all go hand in hand so this is the door that opens up the door that opens up from this is a door of spiritual ascension and one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that teaches us in his book and he directs this to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and say my Lord increase me in knowledge is that no matter what it is that we attain and it's mentioned here in terms of knowledge no matter how much knowledge that we attain there's more knowledge to attain so this is the state you want more and then you get more and then you want more and then you get more and then you want more and then you get more and no matter how much knowledge that we come to know, what we don't know is significantly greater than what we do know. And in fact, that what do we actually ever even really know? And knowledge doesn't have an end. So in paradise, we will eternally be increasing in knowledge. Eternally. It never ends. We can understand that as a concept. We can't understand that too. Right here in this world, it's like, okay, how can you get more than a perfect score on the SATs? Right? You can conceptually at least learn everything that you can learn about algebra. You could conceptually at least learn everything that you could possibly learn of what's been discovered about chemistry or any of the sciences. You could that potentially learn everything that could possibly be learned about medicine. I mean, most people don't, can't do that, but it's possible that in terms of a rational possibility. But those knowledges have limits. There's, only, there's a limit to what you just get you know, but knowledge of Allah has no limit. You learn and then you can learn more and you learn and then you learn more. You learn and then you're constantly in a state of feeling in absolute need of Allah Ta'ala and then your knowledge just increases and increases and increases eternally. What we want is to live right here where we plant the seed <clears throat> for that internal increase here in this world and then harvest it next in the hereafter. And this is why Allah Ta'ala says to everyone, illa You've only been given a little of knowledge. So that pertains to the first part of this aphorism. Al-Araf la yuzulu Look at how many words is that? Four words. Look at how much depth there is in four words. And then the second half of the statement is, وَلَا يُكُونُ مَعَ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ قَرَارُهُ Nor does he find rest in anything other than Allah. And this is because of the state of the Araf Billah, is that he only finds intimacy in the rumors of Allah Ta'ala. Is that his devotion and his focus is on his Lord and so this leads him to feel a natural feeling of estrangement from human beings and at first it seems very difficult this seems like something that is against our nature as human beings one of the reasons that we are in San is because of uns is because we find familiarity with people is that we're social creatures we can't just separate ourselves from people in the lower states. We suffer when we don't have people. We were just thinking about this other day, that as, as there's something so beautiful just having a center that we can all come to. And even if you're just briefly speaking to people, you don't think that it's really that important, but it's so important. Just saying salams to people, just asking about people, just very small things, just small in exchanges, even if they're brief, these are very meaningful. Very important for the human being as we progress in the spiritual path. But what we're talking about now is that someone who's reached this goal, it doesn't mean by saying that they feel estranged from people that they don't give them their right. No, on the contrary. They give people their rights more than other people of dunya give people their rights. Because all of their interactions are for Allah. It doesn't mean that there's not that love that they have for that person. It doesn't mean that there's not a connection that they have for that person. There is. 
But what's behind it is different. It is actually more real and that it's more meaningful. And so the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is their state. And so their state of qarar, of stability, of repose, of rest, is only in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're different. And so it's possible for this person to have a life that is very turbulent, but they're extremely stable. They're not phased by the ups and downs. They're not phased by being moved from a state of that difficulty to ease. They're not phased by moving from a state of wealth to poverty, hakada, from good health to bad health. <coughs> they're stable. They're grounded. Why? Because their repose is in Allah. They see all of the different states as being from Allah to Barakawatana. And this allows them to remain firm and to be the way that it is that they need to be. But the source of that is their recognition of their itirar, of their utter need. And then what comes from their being in a state of utter need is, is that whatever state comes their way, because they see it as being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they're able to adjust accordingly. These are precious gems of wisdom. And in closing, there's just a beautiful quote that Sayyid Ahmad Zaru mentions in his commentary on this aphorism, where he says, Al-Arif Musumun Bithalath. There are three traits that are characteristics of the know of Allah. Shahudu kullil wujudi bi hagikati hukmihin lati hiya wujud al iftiqar. So these are people that see all of creation and they, when they see all of creation <coughs> is that they see that everything in creation is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, shuhud al mujid li kulli shay bi wujud al kamar wa nut al jalal is that these are people that witness the one who originates everything, who brings everything to existence, is that he has the traits of perfection and majesty. And then, tamakkunu dhalika min haqiqati bi kulli hal, is that this is their state that remains with them. So he said, what comes from the first state is seeing everything in the need of Allah Ta'ala. Is, is that their reliance is just on, is only upon Allah. They don't incline towards the things of this world. And of the second, i.e. that they're always aware of the attributes of perfection and majesty of Allah Ta'ala. Is that they rush to Him and find intimacy in His remembrance. And then the third, which is this being a perpetual state in them, that leads them to being present with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And these are words that we say upon our tongue, and then we fall into heedlessness that in the moment after, not even five minutes after, not even 30 minutes later, let alone an hour. But we read them, and it's a good sign for the heart to be attached to them. Even if we're bereft of them, even if we're not even close to them, it's a good sign that we love these books and that these meanings enrich us. And they excite us to do what it is that we can by way of amal, by way of action, and by way of ilm, by way of learning. We learn, we put that knowledge into practice and draw near to them in hopes that we start to get a scent or a glimpse of something of what Allah Ta'ala gives to his close servants. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala open up the doors of our understanding, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, and to make these meanings a reality in us. And to give us tawfiq in all of our affairs. Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.